Good morning, I'm Jodo Wale, professor at the University of Bologna, and I will be your instructor for the lessons on karst. We'll talk about uh, this unique process. We'll see what it makes at the surface and underground. We'll talk about how caves form, and then we go into detail a bit about the caves in this area and the landforms as well. And uh, then we'll see what we can see in caves, so how we can read the morphologies in a cave and understand how things have formed on the, on the ground. Karst uh, is a word that comes from the Slovenian, which is an area, Karso, Karso Triestine and Slovenian Karts. And the definition is something like a various form of rock weathering, where the dominant process is dissolution. So the word dissolution is important in karst. That's the only process in the world, geological process, where dissolution is important in shaping the landscape. And that's why we have underground voids, because it, the rock dissolves. Now we're going to talk about the karst process and its uniqueness in the world. So in the definition we see dissolution, so we need something to dissolve, we need a rock that can go into solution, meaning we can exclude a lot of types of rocks. We won't have karst forms in granites, for example. So we need evaporites like gypsum and rock salt, which are quite common on the, on the world surface, and especially carbonate rocks, so limestones and dolostones, which are the mountains around us here. We need a water liquid. In, in the earth it would be water. So the rocks are dissolved in water. This means that we need an area where we have rainfall. So in desert areas today, we won't have karst processes active. And so also in Antarctica, because it's all the ice. Okay? But you have to think uh, in terms of geological time. So today, maybe in the Sahara, there's no rainfall. But 10,000 years ago, maybe it rained over there. So we can find caves over there as well. And then we need the right uh, conditions of the rock itself, because this dissolution happens at the surface, but also underground. So we need a rock portion in which the water that falls on the rock can penetrate already inside and start dissolving underground. So we need a rock which is slightly fractured or bedding planes that allow the water to go underground from the beginning. That's why in marble rocks, which are, it's a metamorphic rock, that is not fractured, we won't have big karst phenomena because the rock is a solid block and the water cannot go in inside from the beginning, unless it's fractured, of course. These are uh, some of the most common minerals we have in the world, such as quartz, dolomite, calcite, gypsum, and halite, and these are the solubilities uh, without CO2 and with CO2 in the atmosphere and the water. And we can see that quartz, for example, is very slowly dissolvable. So in quartzite, we can have caves as well, but we need a long time. You, we need very old rocks. Dolomite and calcite, which are the two carbonate minerals, they have very low solubility without CO2 in the atmosphere and the water. So it's like in quartzite, more or less, not, not a lot more. But if we put some CO2 in the water, then we can get up to 300 milligrams a liter. So that's, it's still slow process, but in geological times, in about 10,000 years, it gives uh, nice landforms, okay? Gypsum is much more soluble. CO2 doesn't have an effect on this, and the salt as well. Salt is the one we put in the soups, of course. Eh? So we have very easily gypsum and halite karst, Halite is very fast. We have caves in the time of one year. One rainfall makes a cave, okay? Gypsum is in the time frame of a human life. So in 50 years, we can have a, size, a, a cave of the size of a man. You can go inside. In calcite and dolomite, we need uh, at least a couple of centuries. We, we are talking about 1,000 years at least. It can be much more even. Depends on how much rain there is, how much CO2, so the process in dolomite and calcite is much more complex because the CO2 goes into the process in the chemistry. We are going to talk about carbonate rocks because the caves we will be seeing is, are in limestone, all of them, in these following days. 
And by the way, carbonate rocks are very important in the world. So there's about 12% of the land surface is carbonate. 25% of the water we are drinking comes from these rocks. So it's a very important uh, process to be studied in carbonate rocks, especially because we, we drink the water coming from there. So now we know what karst is. I hope you know what karst is. We unfortunately have to do some chemistry. That's the typical reaction of karst. So this is calcite, calcium carbonate, the CO2 and the water combining. This is carbonic acid, which would be this reaction. This carbonic acid is able to dissolve the calcium carbonate and it goes in solution. So you can see it simply in one reaction, which is an equilibrium reaction. It can go to the right, say, down or up in this case. So the rock can dissolve, but the calcium carbonate can also come out of the water. That's what speleothems, uh, where speleothems come from. Uh, this, in fact, is a combination of six reactions of which the slowest one is this one. There's the formation of carbonic acid. This takes a couple of seconds. All the rest is in milliseconds, it's immediately, almost. So this is the one that is controlling the speed of the process, more or less. That's chemical. Eh? What we see is important is uh, that CO2 is in the reaction. So if we change the quantity of CO2, we change the product the products on the sides of the reaction. So if we increase CO2, we speed up the process and more calcium carbonate will go into solution. If we take away CO2, say CO2 gas escapes the water, we will have the process in, on the other way. So calcium carbonate will go out of solution and become solid again. Okay. Another thing is the temperature. That's the typical of all chemi chemical reactions. If you get the temperature a bit higher, the chemical, re chemical reactions go faster. That's difficult because temperature, higher temperature means that CO2 will escape the water. So we will get the gas getting out of the water. So in fact, in, react in karst reactions, the solution of this type, uh, higher temperatures means slower the solution. So it's not easy in tropical climates to have karsts but we have a lot of CO2, there's a lot of plants, so it, it's, it's a sort of equilibrium over there. And then pH, of course. The acidity can come from other things, it's not only CO2. We can put in there uh, humic acids, organic acids, we can put in there even the, the oxidation of pyrite, which is a sulfate, a sulfide, um, bringing some sulfuric acid into the solution, that's all stuff that can go in there. So it can be extremely complex. What we have to think about is also an open system or closed system. What does it mean? The open system means that we have the rock and the water in contact and there's the air in contact with these two components. Meaning if we uh, use CO2 in the water to dissolve limestone, then the CO2 of the atmosphere can get into the water again. So it's continuously fed by CO2 if you have the contact with air. In the closed system, there's only water and rock that's deep in the Earth's surface. So there's no atmosphere. We have CO2 in the water, it dissolves, but you are consuming CO2. And there's no way of getting new CO2 into the water. So the reaction is very different, meaning that in the cost process, it's very efficient in the surface portions of the Earth's surface. The deeper you go, the worse it gets, because there's no way of getting CO2 in there. So you're consuming it. In fact, you see that in the reaction to take away calcium carbonate from the rock and dissolve it, get it into solution, we use one molecular of CO2. So in reality, we are consuming CO2. So if it's an open system, the process can go on because the atmosphere delivers new CO2 to the solution. If it's a closed system, you just finish it. You finish CO2. So the reaction stops.